Okay, let's take a look at the simplex geometry of the ferro cell for a second. Well, we see a hypertrochoid, but what can we make of the fact of where there is light and where there is not light? Well, first we have to define what a magnet is. And empirically so, a magnet is no different pre-magnetization rather than it is post-magnetization. So what's the discrepancy? Before it is turned into a quote-unquote magnet, it is uh, nothing other than an incoherent lump of neodymium iron boron or a ferrite or a sumerium cobalt. So what actually defines a magnet? And what defines a magnet is field coherency. Now that which uh, gives definition to 100% of the visible universe is magnetism. As Faraday called it, the dielectric field. Specifically, it is a, a field perturbation. It is the loss of inertia. It follows exactly the Henry-Poincaré disk model of projective geometry. Where have we seen this pattern before? By the way, this spirograph, spirograph-like pattern that uh, people uh, are, uh, you know, have in their minds is uh, technically a hypertrochoid. But what is it that we're looking at? You know, certainly we've seen this pattern before in nature from the Ojibwe Indians. This is a dream catcher. Here we're just even, we're just looking at an interwoven pattern of interlacing, convergence, and divergence. But where have we seen this before? This is actually a true photograph, not computer generated. But we're looking at incoherent light. Not coherent light, not laser light, but incoherent regular LED illumination. You can even use a very bright flashlight. If you were to ring the ferro cell with a bright flashlight, you would see the exact same pattern. So here we have the hypertrochoid. You know, it depends on what color light you use. Here we have it. So let's get to a point. Let's uh, make some conclusions. And so we know that we're looking at the field perturbation as influenced upon the light from a coherent field. Now, in reference to the double slit experiment, which nobody has ever accurately defined and certainly does not support quantum mechanics, we have what they incorrectly interpret as constructive and destructive interference, which leads us to the light pattern projected two-dimensionally upon the wall, where we have bright spots, missing spots, bright spots, and missing spots. But it's not constructive or destructive. It's additive divergence or it's additive convergence. See, the same thing that we're looking at right here from the laser, constructive interference, destructive interference, this over here using a magnet is the exact same thing that we're seeing over here, except projected differently through a different apparatus. Here we have incoherent light, which shows a pattern of additive or subtractive uh, divergence or convergence. Over here we're using a coherent light source. See the difference is we have coherent light over here passing through an inchoate double slit. Over here we're using just the opposite. We're using a coherent uh, field uh, with incoherent light. So we have coherent light over here but over here we have incoherent light. This is just regular incoherent light except it manifests itself coherently. That is because it is in the presence of a coherent field. No difference. Here we're using coherent light. Over here we're using incoherent light, but in the presence of a coherent field. See, the incommensurability of what is occurring in a magnet is attributional in relationship to how the magnet is self-similar. Self-similarity throughout the entirety of a magnet that exists after it's been magnetized. So we're looking at a giant block, whatever type of magnet it is, that is coherent. So we have incoherent light in the presence of incoherent, uh, with a coherent, incoherent light in the presence of a coherent field, i.e. the magnet. Here we have coherent light that's actually passing through a double slit. Now what exactly are we looking at here? Okay, well, this is the hypertrochoid here. Okay, it looks like a spirograph pattern. Looks like a dream catcher. Okay, okay, well, what does that mean? Here is looking edge on. This is not, look, this is one pole, this is another, this is a real photograph, by the way, this is not computer generated. So you're not looking dead on on either pole of the magnet. You're looking sideways along the edge of a square magnet. Okay, what we're looking at 
over here on the left, the basis of the entire universe is the same thing we see right here. This is a water flowing down a hole. This is the exact same thing. We're looking at a vortex. This is exactly what you're looking at. Simplex field pressure mediation. It's not more complex than that. Simplex field pressure mediation. Here is the exact same hypertrochoid in a, in a sunflower. The exact same pattern that follows the golden ratio that we can see here. Exactly the same thing. You are looking at a vortex, a funnel. This is a real photo. Both of these are real photographs. They're not computer generated. You're looking at a vortex on one pole here and another vortex on another pole here. Except you're looking at it edge on. The only thing you're seeing is literally a vortex on either side of a magnet. Now a magnet does not have poles, technically. Well, sure it does. It has a north pole and south pole. No, it doesn't. It actually has the inverse. We have to define magnetism specifically. It has the inverse of Euclidean space. See, the conjugate nature of the universe is very, very simple. Except human beings are very, very dumb. This is the hyperboloid. Okay? This defines trans-Euclidean geometry or metageometry. Even Euclid talked about the geometry that preceded uh, physical geometry. Human beings only understand existential or physical geometry. This hourglass shape is what you see if you were to look at a magnet edge on underneath the ferrocell cell or any other magnetic viewing device. This is the hyperboloid. This is the form of counter space. This is the conjugate form to the geometry of space. Now both of these are the exact same thing. Well, no, they're not. Over here I see a torus or a donut, and over here I see a hyperboloid. Okay, well you rotate this hyperboloid end on, and you'll see this. See the negative image of this donut, or this torus, is this, the hyperboloid. This is magnetism. This is increasing inertia. This is force in motion. This is inertia and acceleration. Force in motion, inertia and acceleration. Magnetism, dielectricity, both of these together are one thing. Space, counter space. Magnetism, inertia, dielectricity. Force in motion, inertia and acceleration. It's that simple. This is this. You see the negative? The negative image of the torus is the hyperboloid. This is the hyperboloid, this hourglass shape you see here. Okay, this is exactly what we're looking at. This is the secrets of the universe. This is the secret of the universe. There's only one field in the universe. That is inertia. Its perturbation, the loss of inertia, is what defines magnetism. This is inertia. This is the loss of inertia. The conjugate. You can't have one without the other. One gives definition to the other. Magnetism defines the inertia. Inertia defines the magnetism. Inertia obviously comes first. Magnetism is the loss of that inertia, which follows an equation of 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, which is 4.23606, excuse me, 0 0.23606, which existentially goes off into phi cubed, but that's a matter for another discussion. Coherent light, coherent field, it doesn't matter. Whatever viewing material we're looking at, and no one's ever discovered this secret, is the exact same thing. The hyperboloid, the torus. You see this void right here? This is the same thing as we see over here. This is magnetism. This is looking edge on. This right here is the same thing as this over here. It's the hyperboloid, the torus, the torus hyperboloid. They're both one and the same. You can't ha talk about one without talking about the other. One gives definition to the other and vice versa. Now this is a coherent. We don't see this in incoherent things like wood and uh, plywood and aluminum and... Uh, you know, glass and rocks, and we can only understand this. A magnet is nothing special. 
the only thing that actually gives a speciality to a magnet is that it is large and we can make it its field coherency coit. In other words, it operates coherently. In other words, we can make all the atomic structure, which is incorrectly called aligned domains, which means nothing. That's a description, not an explanation. What's a magnet? Well, it's a bunch of aligned domains. They're all aligned. They're all working together. Well, that means nothing. That's a description. That's not an explanation. Defines a magnet as field coherency. Simplex field coherency. This is the shape, the geometry of the entire universe. The hyperboloid and the torus. Can't have one without the other. Inertia obviously comes first. This is it, the hyperboloid and the torus. You are looking at a vortex. When you look at the face, Of the magnet, you are looking at a field vortex. This is this. These are one and the same thing. It's undeniable. It can't even exist any other way. It's irrefutable. Anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, this is the uh, secret of the universe in its divine simplicity. Why? Because Mother Nature is uh, not a crazy hooker with a calculator. She doesn't do math. She doesn't do math at all. She doesn't have a calculator. Only understands two things. Force and motion, inertia and acceleration, convergence and divergence. The universe is that simple. No math is needed to understand it. Only wisdom. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later. Bye.